commission. Okay? Before he say, say, say or he explain everything, then by the way, I give all authority. Okay? Whenever I start speaking, okay? So, so, so what's authority? Then all power is given unto me in uh, uh, heaven and in earth. So this, uh, this kind of authority, he got the one, then I gave, gave it to you. I gave it to you. Already you receive. Whenever you meditate the word of God and read the word of God, then hear the word of God, then you got the already power. You know. Now, next step, then go, not just sit, okay? Go in the world and tell what's good news for you, okay? So that's why this one said, listen, go in therefore and teach all uh, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching the uh, verse 20, teaching them to observe the, all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So, in other words, we are starting. Church grow, church grow, church increase, church member increase, be believer increase, um, Christian gonna be increase, you know, all the kind of increasing one. So what God uh, give you, so give us to like a grow, grow this one. He said this one, okay, going therefore and teach all nations. What's actually teach? Gospel, good news, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and all uh, of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe the all things whatsoever I have commanded you and I'm with you always every unto the end of the end of the world okay people talking about now the end of the world jesus is coming you know that's what the people talking about because uh, some uh, sign in the you know in the bible really talks talking about jesus himself told us so then uh, all kind of the natural phenomena, natural thing, earthquake, you know, tsunami, and, uh, uh, you know, all kinds of things, famine, you know, all kinds of bad, bad things happen. Then especially last year and this year, not only this country, globally, pandemic. Pandemic mean is a coronavirus, so-called 19, because word 19, uh, number 19 mean is 2019, you know, come out. But some, some scholar said, no, 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 like 10 years ago, coronavirus, we know that. Just uh, stay, stay there, you know, not to spread the whole world, okay? So that's why it looks like a, People talking about this is like a mankind uh, virus, you know. But I, 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 uh, I kind of learned, you know, quite a bit uh, coronavirus 19. But now 21, well, one year passed, but to still put the people put the mask and carefully go out and, uh, you know, that kind of things then still doing, but uh, uh, in a class then the, uh, I don't need to put the mask on it. I'm free to speak, okay, thank God. But anyway, 
you know, lots of things uh, happen. So that's why that's a kind of sign. Bible itself then the prophesy in the come. In the come mean is the end of the world. You know, uh, then the Revelation 20, 20 and the 21, then we are talking about the new world. Okay. Uh, so, uh, not only just the uh, uh, new, new world to come, this one. So, uh, we, we are just expecting uh, new, new, new things coming. But there are lots of things going on. Then, the, uh, like a Revelation uh, chapter 22, you know, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of the life. Uh, this is verse 1. Uh, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of the God and of the Lamb. So he's talking about the, uh, uh, John, Apostle John, talking about the, where the heaven, what it looks like. He, he's talking about, you know, chapter chapter twelve. Okay, very precisely he he explained to us, you know, then uh, like a uh, twenty one, Revelation chapter twenty one verse eighteen, and be building of the wall of uh, it was uh, it was it was of jasper and the city was a pure gold like unto clear glass yeah that's what he he saw the vision then he described to us now okay so that's why uh, uh, revelation chapter uh, 20 21 22 the, the kind of fascinating the new heaven and the new us new heaven and the new us People said, end of the world. Then the world was new. End of the world. Something happened and the new things happened. That's why end. This world, this age, end. Now, new world come. So that's why uh, chapter 21 said, uh, the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, earth itself then the replaced in the old earth. In the Bible, we have said, then the new world, earth, then coming down from heaven, kind of replace, okay, this one. So that's why it said, the new heaven and the, and the new earth. Okay, verse one, I saw a new heaven and the new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. But the new heaven got the no sea. We got the, uh, you know, like the 70% of the uh, face of the earth uh, uh, sea, right? Yeah, only 30% in the, yeah, you know, land or something like that. So this one uh, passed away. And there was no, no more sea. Okay, verse two. And I John, I John, then this is a vision, but he introduced himself. I John, okay, this one, that's fine, very, very clear uh, who wrote this one. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, uh, I John saw the holy city city new jerusalem coming down from the god out of the heaven prepared as the uh, bride adorned for her husband so then the looks like a you know husband waiting in the new world this one said then the verse three and I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his 
people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tear from their eye and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither, neither shall there be any more pain. That's a new world he's talking about. John himself, he saw the vision he wrote for us. So that's, that's what the Revelation 21 and 22 we are talking about. So that's why Bible is really, really, very much critical and also very accurately. So then, that's why people t talking about the now, end of the world. But the Bible doesn't, doesn't finish then the end of the world. Then continuously, then the world got the new heaven and the earth. Okay? So that's why uh, uh, first I read this one, then so fascinated. Then, uh, you know, uh, my father, he died 42 years old. You know, that's the end of the whole, whole life. That's what I thought. Nothing. Nothing else. You know, just he lived 42 years, then died and become usher and, uh, you know, buried in a tomb, okay? Like, just like ancestors, the same, same tomb, okay? So that's, uh, I, 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 you know, realize my, my life, you know, something. So then after, after I read the, you know, Bible, now completely renew my mind and my spirit. Then, then God actually show us Bible, then very clearly, Matthew chapter 28, you know, verse 19, 18, 19, and Revelation, then the chapter 21 and 22. I want you to read this one, okay? Because I don't have time to explain the whole, whole thing. <clears throat> but anyway, go back to this one, said, Church growth means to spread the gospel in the world. Go in the world, preach gospel, make a disciple. That's, a, that's a, his, uh, Jesus Christ, his commandment before he went to heaven. So then the, uh, Matthew recorded and John recorded the revelation. You know. So then the, we are so glad to have this one. Okay, just continuously we are studying uh, church growth. Okay, in order to understand then this semester, we have to establish certain things because uh, uh, how we can find out like a church growth. Number one, we have to identify. We have to identify. Then this one said, uh, God's greatness. Because we looking, church growth means, you know, we are talking about then the, this church community and the church group and the church world, okay? So, you know, that growth is something. We got to know who actually control. Who give us direction? You know, God, right? Then the next question is, who God is? Who God is? We got to know, you know, first place. This is a very important. Then we just looking, then church growth means you have to do Bible class, you got to do seminar, we got to do evangelistic meeting, then all kinds of things. But first, we got to know who is God. You know, that's kind of important. You know. So that's why I uh, bring up this one. Then God's greatness, okay? God's greatness in Jesus described the earth, okay? 
this is a page three. This is a extremely important, uh, uh, you know, like a six things. Uh, Christ described as God. You know what the Bible said, Titus two thirteen. First one, Christ described as God. Okay, He's a God. What actually the Bible say about? So today we quote a lot of Bible scripture because this is a guidebook, church growth. Okay, so that's why uh, guidebook. Then we gotta uh, we gotta find out the guidebook. If you go to the mountain somewhere, then beautiful place in this particular area, you have to have a map to go. You can't just just walking. No, you got the, you need a, like a guideline, you know, guidance. Okay. So that's why this one said, God's greatness. Christ described as God. Okay. So just read the Titus 2. Okay, Titus is very short uh, scripture. Okay, but anyway, uh, kind of important, to, you know, one, this one, Titus. Okay. Epistle of Paul, the apostle to Titus. Okay, that's, that's actually this book, yeah, you know, this one. So that's why, you know, just like a, a chapter one, verse one said, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God, elect in the acknowledgement of the truth, which is after godliness. Okay, so then I like to read uh, Christ described as God, okay? So Titus chapter 2, verse 13, okay? This one we're going to read, this one. Looking for that blessed hope and, and the gracious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This was definitely uh, described and uh, dis described then, then, then as a God, okay? This one's important. So, book, book of Titus, uh, chapter 2, verse 13. That's, that's uh, uh, Christ described as a God. Okay, now, Christ, second one, Christ described as a prophet. Where actually we can find? Luke, Book of Luke, chapter 7, 16. That's what we're going to look into. So then very important things, like I told you, this guidebook is a tool anyway, church growth. But you have to grab the Bible. What actually guide Bible tells us? Jesus Christ as a God, Jesus Christ as a prophet. Okay. Chapter Luke chapter 7, verse 16. Let me read. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that the great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. Wow. God visited among the people. So then uh, Jesus Christ as a prophet, he himself then told us in the Bible, especially first covenant. You know, Old Testament, New Testament, we got the two covenants. Old Covenant, New Covenant. But the Old Testament, especially like a, a, a five, uh, 
you know, books uh, Moses he wrote, okay, so five books, right? So then another uh, to total 30, 39, so another 34 books, then all the David and, the, you know, other people, Joshua, you know, all other, you know, people, he, uh, you know, actually wrote this one. Okay. Then, the, so then the more you study in the Old Testament, you can see the Jesus in the Old Testament. So that's why uh, uh, Jesus Christ in Old Testament. One of the uh, preacher and evangelist and the teacher, uh, Mary Hickey, she wrote a book, Jesus Christ in a book, Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ in New Testament and Old Testament. That's a very fascinating book. You know, you can, you can read, then understand, then the overall picture, you know. Uh, then the center is Jesus Christ, you know, based on the Jesus. Jesus actually talk, talking about the, uh, Genesis to uh, Malachi, okay, yeah. So this one said, uh, 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 Jesus Christ, Christ described as a prophet. That's Luke 7, 16. Now next one. Christ described as, uh, as a priest. Okay, priest in the Old Testament, we just read this one. You know, Old Testament said that, you know, priest. What the priest mean is that he actually hear the voice of the law. He actually perform in the, you know, like a kind of tabernacle and also, you know, all uh, the all, uh, uh, ceremony or something like that. Priest one, just like a, a pastor on the church nowadays, okay? Like a rabbi, meaning a teacher, then the, uh, priest also teacher, and also he communicate with God. So then the, he actually, tell and give uh, uh, revelation knowledge what actually God said then give uh, you know word of God and give a direction and the lifestyle or something so priest is very important than the, this one that's why God uh, God God greatness is uh, Jesus Christ right because it's God, God sent Jesus Christ to the earth. You know, that's a greatness. You know, great things. Great gift for us. So then the uh, Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 14. That's, we're going to just read this one, okay? This is a kind of fascinating study today. Because we got to know the center of the, uh, you know, cent center of the church growth and the purpose, okay? Okay, chapter, uh, Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 6, uh, chapter, uh, just uh, chapter 4, verse 14. Book of Hebrew, Looks like a very detail about the Jewish ceremony and the detail, detail, detail about. Just like the Old Testament. At the time, then, the, you know, uh, Old Testament, New, New Testament to writer, then, the, you know, quote Old Testament, of course. But at the time, uh, so many, you know, things going on, all the covenant to new covenant then somebody really knows you know both covenant because new covenant he really worked with Jesus Christ 
because he persecuted Christian. And, uh, you know, Christian and uh, Jesus kind of follower or disciple and also, uh, you know, people like a believer or something. He persecuted, you know, Paul. But once he, he was, a, his mission, you know, persecute the people at the Damascus. Then the suddenly bright light hit his eye. Then he fell down from the horse, or horse, okay? Then he couldn't see anything, okay? Then first word, okay, here's the very key. First word he said, Lord, Lord, you know, who you are, or something like that. But, but at least he heard some voice of the Lord anyway at the time. So then Jesus actually talked. So he said, I am Jesus Christ. You persecuted me, you know, something like that. He was so surprised. He couldn't see anything. So then, then after that, then somebody <clears throat> took him. He was, a, you know, he was a very much <clears throat> like a future high position of the, uh, you know, uh, Jewish religion anyway, okay? Maybe he become a high priest or something like that. But at the time he was young, you know, young. Then he, he whenever he got to come out, then he, he actually do something, okay? So that's a, that's a, you know, very much an energetic guy, but then he fell down on the floor, on the ground, then he couldn't do anything. So then the G Jesus actually appeared at him. So then the, uh, then the Paul actually uh, respond, whenever I ask the Jesus, then said, you, you, you go uh, the place to heal, then Jesus explained anyway, then uh, uh, through the other people, okay. So then he went there, then the, uh, somebody lay on the hand, then he got the completed heal. Then the next day or next day or two days after, he go to the plaza and the preach the gospel, Jesus is the truth, you know, truth set you free, you know, something like that. Then the, he started preaching, but nobody believed, and the, okay, he can't persecute, he's a crazy guy. So no one believed, no one listened or something like that. So then he, after that, he went to, I don't know, mountain or a desert or something. So that I don't know how many years he spent, then he come back. You know, God actually teach him, okay? So that's a story. But that's a, a priest, uh, uh, pri priest. God, God's greatness, Jesus Christ described as, as a priest. Hebrew, book of Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that, we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. So this is a, a Jesus as a priest. Okay, now, Jesus Christ described as uh, as a king, Jesus Christ as a king, he was born in a king. So book of uh, uh, book book of Luke. Okay, full gospel this one. Book of Luke, chapter one, verse thirty-two. Okay. This is a, uh, you know, like a, this area title, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, okay? So verse 
32 and 33. That's what I'm going to read. Book of Luke, Book of St. Luke, chapter 1, verse 20, uh, 32. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of the Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Okay. So Jesus Christ described that he is a, uh, you know, God. Jesus Christ himself, then he's a God. Okay. Described as a God. Okay. Now, next one, like a power. You know, God, God, described God, God said first, uh, uh, you know, Jesus as a God, Jesus as a prophet, Jesus as a priest, Jesus as a king, Jesus got the power. Okay. Okay, so Revelation chapter 11, Verse 17. So we just continuously reading, you know, Bible. This one. Very important. The area I explained to you, you guys, okay? Revelation chapter 11, verse 17. This is a power on him. Okay, this one's a, uh, uh, you know, Old Testament is a little bit complicated, but, uh, you know, uh, once you understand, and then through the, through the Bible, and, uh, you know, easy to understand. But uh, so, meantime, then we are talking about uh, element of the Christ in the Bible, okay, in the Christ in uh, Revelation. Chapter 11, verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God, Almighty, which art and uh, west and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. So this one. Maybe more, uh, you know, I, I, I have to explain in this one. Like a revelation, a book of, book of Genesis, like a 17 chapter. Okay, this one's a, we're going to read. This one's a describe the Father, His power, you know, His mighty power. So this one said, uh, 17 verse 1. When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, Abraham, when, when, when Abraham, Abraham was 99 years old, okay, he, uh, then uh, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. What a wonderful, you know, powerful scripture, uh, Genesis 17, verse 2. So another one, God himself introduced, you know, Jesus is a, one of the Trinity, another one, uh, God Father, Son Jesus, and the uh, Holy Spirit, three function of the God, but one. Okay, so that's why uh, Bible Genesis actually described the power of the Father, of Father God. You know this one. Okay, then the same power Jesus God because the Trinity is same. You know Holy Spirit and Father God and Jesus are same. Okay. So that's why this one said, 
He said this is, I am Almighty. He said Almighty. I am the Almighty. Almighty, then the, earlier uh, we studied this one. Okay. Almighty Okay, another the Almighty God. Almighty means everything he can do, he can have. Okay? So that's Almighty means. So this one's actually Hebrew, this one's L. El Shaddai, El means the God. This is a uh, Shaddai mean is a loving anyway anything, mighty okay, mighty power and also, you know, Shaddai means like a woman said like a kind of breast means that you know we are human like a baby, baby without the milk then. The, actually die, then never grow, growing up, you know, kind of immature, you know, kind of, you know, baby or something like that. So that's why this one said, Genesis 17 verse 2 said, Almighty God, okay, so he himself, Genesis, book of Genesis, the first book of the, you know, this one, he himself introduced, I am the almighty God, you know, he said. So what other about Jesus Christ also, uh, one of the uh, Trinity, you know, three you know, different, uh, you know, functions God had. So, so that's why, uh, you know, like a, that's the power, this one's almighty power, okay, so this one. Okay, now next one, Christ described as, as a shepherd, okay, that's also Hebrew chapter 13, okay, here we are, 13, Hebrew, Chapter 13, verse 20. Okay, I'm going to read this one. Now, the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So, in other words, this one said that uh, God of peace. Now the God of peace. Peace being is a you got the looks like a, everything be happy. So the Greek this meaning mean mean the peace mean like a more like a prosperity of me, meaning of this one. So that's why now the God of peace. Now the God of the prosperity that brought again from the dead of uh, dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, so that he got the peace, you know, he got the peace. So sheep then, you know, uh, actually always worry about. So the sheep doesn't know what to do, only shepherd guide him guide guide sheep to go and find uh you know like a uh, food or something like that and also you know daytime so so hot and uh, you know put the sheep uh, in a uh, uh, shadow you know okay 
So that's why great shepherd of the sheep. That's Jesus Christ, it's there. It's the blood of the ever, everlasting covenant. So the uh, relationship to shepherd and uh, sheep, okay, we call covenant, you know, promise. Shepherd actually guide the sheep exactly what you know God wants to. Okay. Shepherd never kill the sheep. Shepherd never give a danger. Shepherd never give any uh, unwanted. Okay. That's a shepherd. Okay, we just look at the, this uh, book of Sam, Sam, book of Sam, then the David, uh, he wrote this one, remarkable, very remarkable uh, book, you know, like a Psalm 23, we want to just re re look into, book of Sam, especially 23, actually saying about uh, Shepherd and uh, sheep. Book of Psalm, chapter 20, uh, 30, uh, 23. Okay. So let's look at this beautiful scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. This is, this is a, a, you know, kind of more like a title. Lord is my shepherd. Okay, like I explained already, shepherd never give a danger, never. While well, accidentally some wolf or some calm, then he fall, you know, but anyway, protect. So, uh, so then that case, never give any danger, but in case something happen, he protect, support the sheep. Okay, that's fine. Whatever need the food, a plan, whoever need a, a place to sleep, you know, the rest, then the shepherd know where, uh, where, where he take to the place, okay. So Psalm, Psalm 23 said, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm of David, this is a definitely David, he wrote this one, because he, he understand the Shepherd, okay. He was a shepherd, okay. David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lay down in the green pasture. He lead me beside the still water. Okay, sheep need water. He knows. Shepherd knows. Verse 3. He restored my soul. He lead me in, into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He's a leader. Okay, verse 4. Yea, thou I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Sometimes you have to go through the, this pathway, okay, our even the life. But shepherd protect him. Even, even this one said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy Lord and thy staff, they comfort me. So in other words, he got the step. Okay. Whenever very dangerous area you have to go through your life. But the shepherd actually take care of you, protect you. Whenever evil come, evil spirit come, he, he fought, you know, fought, okay. A kind of fight, fought. Okay, then the Birma or something like that. Okay. 
So, so then the verse five. So then the comfort me in the sheep become peaceful, comfortable. Okay. Thou prepare prepare a table before me in the presence of uh, my enemy. Thou anointing uh, 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 anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. So in other words, even uh, he you know, sit, sit uh, kind of among the evil, but still enemy, yes, uh, anointing my head with oil, my cup running over. So in other words, then even though, even though then the all enemy around, but still shepherd protect you, okay. So then the anointing mean anoint anoint mean is a power. Okay. Jesus Christ himself anointing one. Jesus is anointing anointing one. Anointed one. Okay, Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Christ means is a powerful guy. Because he got all the power on it. Okay. Jesus Christ, Christ means anointed one. Anointed one. Okay. He got all the power on, on him. Okay. So verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So then the, as long as you got the Christ, he is a power, this one. Anointing one means is a this one's a power. Maybe just power one. Okay. The man who got the power, you know, this one. Anointed one in the Christ. This one. So as long as you got the Jesus, he never leave you, nor forsake you. So that's why you are very safe. Then verse verse six said, uh, book of Psalm 23, verse 6 says. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the day of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, this one's uh, uh, mercy, goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. As long as you got the Jesus, follow me. All the day of my life, all the day, never stop until he died. Okay. So this is a Psalm 23 is kind of important. That's what the uh, uh, you know uh, shepherd Christ described as shepherd. Okay. So shepherd. And the next one apply to his believers. Now we describe the, how great God is, how great Jesus is. Then all he, he is a God, Jesus is a God, and Jesus is a prophet, Jesus is a priest, Jesus is a king, Jesus is a power, and also Jesus is a shepherd. Okay. So you got that, you know, whole picture, 
who Jesus is. That's a great, great you know, picture. Then now apply to his believers. Okay. So what actually apply to his believer? Number one. That's a Matthew chapter 5, 12 said reward. Okay. God reward you. Reward you. Matthew 5. Chapter Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. Rejoice and exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so uh, persecuted they the prophet which were before you. So another word, this one said. You know, whenever you walk here, this, this earth, okay, you know, good work, you know, like a user phase, you know, all kinds of the uh, uh, things that I described before. But this, so you can get the reward, you know, special gift for you in heaven. So that's why. You know, Bible clearly said that he never, never lie, he never say wrong or something. Uh, always, uh, you know, word of God is the truth. So then, if you rely on the word of God, you never, you know, uh, you never be unhappy. You know, you always be happy. You know. So that's why, that's what the word of God, and also he got the promise, reward in heaven. You are reward in heaven. So this earth, you know, looks like not really, uh, you know, working, really not, uh, you know, pleasing to you or something like that, you know, this world, but don't worry about it. As long as you walk, you, you walk with God, you walk with the Word of God, you know, so that's actually, you give a, a encouragement to the church people. This is a church grow because people understand. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. You are reward in heaven. You know, I understand. That's a great thing to happen. Okay. That's why I'm going to read again. Rejoice. Rejoice. And be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Okay. So next one. Then our path. Okay. Apply to his believer's path. And the faith. Okay. Faith is yours. You use faith or not use faith, it's up to you. But God, really, God and Jesus also recommend you to use faith. Okay? This is why it's very important. You know, if you use if you use faith, your life becomes very much dynamic, you know, life. If you don't use, you like a, uh, you know, sit, doesn't do not, not, nothing, doesn't think anything, you know, so, because uh, what God really said, now faith is, now faith is substance of things hopeful and evidence of things not seen. So that's why very much, you know, God, this is a place to God work for you, okay, if you use faith. So then God see, oh, wow, you use the faith. I understand. Then, so that's why, uh, you know, it is impossible to please God without the faith. 
Okay. Hebrew, book, book of Hebrew, chapter 11, book of Hebrew, okay. Chapter 11, verse 6, okay. I'm going to read. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Okay? For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that delightly seek him. So this is a very strong word, you know, included like a reward, like we are talking about this one, before this one, right? So reward means is very important, you know, in heaven. Reward in heaven. You are reward in heaven. That's what this one said. So then the, uh, Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. If we don't care then the Holy Spirit, we don't care that Jesus, we don't care then the Father God, you know, I do by myself. I walk by myself. Nothing else helps. Okay, nothing asks. Nothing comes out. Not nothing. So that case then the God, God himself said, without faith, it is impossible to please, please, please him. Okay. So, so, so that's why uh, faith is very important. Okay. Next one. Next one, kind of joy. Okay. Joy, Philippians chapter 2, 1 and 2, 2. Okay, that's, this is a very interesting, you know, scripture. Philippians chapter 1, uh, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. See what the Bible say, say about this one. Okay. If there be therefore any consolations in the Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bold and masses, who fulfill ye uh, my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. So this one said that the, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded having the same love being of, of one accord of one mind. What are incredible things then he talk about this one? Philippians chapter 2 verse 1, you know, what conditions that he wrote this book? He was in prison. He just put the chain on the uh, handcuff. Naturally, he can't do anything. But, he applied his, uh, you know, power as a believer, believe Jesus. So even uh, even the situation, then the situation is so bad, crazy situation. You can't laugh. You don't have a joy. Nothing natural. You know, you can imagine then the. Most of the prison, pri, pri, prisoner in the prison, everybody laugh and joy every day. No way. 
you know, most of the people then, why I, I, I have to be here? Because I made a mistake, you know, somebody caught me whenever I stole something, you know. So then all the kind of regret and also nothing future, oh, should I did wrong or something, you know, not repent or something, you know. So then anyway, all mixed the heart, heart, like a feeling that like, uh, you, you know, you know, people had then. The, uh, one time uh, uh, I went to, uh, you know, court in the prison, you know, prison cell, okay. So that's the time then, the, then the, the, every single people almost like a depressed. You know, then also cra crazy ones and make big noise and wah, 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 something like that in the prison, uh, yeah, prison cell or something. But the poor is different. Poor was the same condition in a prison. You know, I don't know, you know, after time, then the prison in Rome, then maybe more uh, bad conditions now. You know, now, uh, LA County prison, if you go, then at least some bed and also like a toilet next to the, you know, bed, bed, bed. And so then anyway, at least they got the hygiene system is correct. But that, at the time, Paul was in a prison. I don't believe, you know, one time I saw the picture then so so kind of messy around the you know, room, room that, that are crazy. You know, people s sit down and stay all day long, all week long, all year months, uh, months and years, and that kind of conditions. People depressed or something. But the poor are different because he got that inside Christ, Christ in me, hope of glory. Okay. Then he knows the Christ in. Then we, we describe the Christ is a God. Christ is a prophet. Christ is a priest. Christ is a king. And Christ is a power. Christ is a shepherd. So that kind of concept that he got the, all his you know, mind and the kind of spirit then he can, he, he, he just uh, ignore what the situation, he can joke, he, he can laugh, he joy the life, you know, that kind of situation he got. So that's by pre, uh, Philippian, uh, book of Philippian, then Paul was in a prison, you know, this one's a, uh, uh, Paul, he wrote this one, kind of A.D. Uh, 54, in, after Christ died, and maybe 20 years, 10 to 20 years after that, he wrote this one, yeah. So then he, he realized, and uh, he never forget that he met Jesus Christ, you know, once. Then also, very many times he heard his voice, he communicated with him, then especially uh, communion <coughs> uh, serves at the time then he got the message from the Jesus Christ. So that's, uh, I think, different. Like the first Corinthians chapter four, 14, okay. 14, verse Corinthians chapter, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire, spiritual gift, but rather that he may uh, prophesy. For he that speaks in unknown tongue, or then this one's all he talked to God, okay? So then the verse 11, uh, chapter 11, so that 
he took God. So in other words, even though he is in a prison, but he took to God, that's different. Okay, now, uh, chapter 11. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Be followed of me, even as I also am of Christ. Okay. Now I praise you, brethren, that he remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. Okay, now then 23. Verse 23, okay, this is the last supper, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And the next one, okay, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remember me. Okay. Now also 25. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had uh, suffered, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus himself talked to the poor. He's a talk, talking about during the Last Supper, you know, communion service. You know, that, that time then Jesus actually spoke to him what to do, what you should do. See, that's why the Paul himself, he heard the voice of the Lord. You know, like a chapter 14, we are talking about uh, kind of speaking tongue or spiritual language to speak to the God, I speak unknown tongue more than ye are. I speak more, meaning is that he communicate with the Lord Jesus Christ more than anybody. You know, that's what this one. So that's why, uh, you, you, you know, even the situation, oh, I'm sorry, Paul, Paul, you are in the prison. That's, that's very not so good hygiene, not so good bed. Not good, good sleeping place. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. But uh, instead of, of of listening, somebody uh, somebody said that. But uh, Paul himself, he heard voice of the Lord. So at the time, then he he can rejoice because Christ in me, Christ with me. Christ as a God with me, and Christ, uh, Christ, Christ, Christ as a, a prophet with me, Christ as a priest with me, Christ as a king with me, Christ as a power with me, Christ as a shepherd with me. So that's why, you know, Paul himself and the life uh, uh, completely different. So we can apply his life also, okay? That's why, uh, like a joy, uh, Acts 8, 8, Nehem Nehemiah 8, 10, okay, Nehemiah 8, 10. This is also captured, uh, ca captured by the uh, uh, Babylon, okay? So the Nehemiah actually more like a rebuilt Rebuilt, uh, uh, you know, war. Rebuilt and uh, Jerusalem. Okay, so at the time he said, "Go like this." 
chapter 8, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat and fat, and drink, and sweet, and send to caution unto them, for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy of the Lord is your strength. So in other words, your strength means that God actually uh, joy means that uh, it is impossible without the uh, without faith. Okay. So in other words, uh, you know, if we don't have any faith, faith, if we don't use faith, then the people just complain then all day long. God doesn't like. Why don't you use a faith? Then once you use a faith, God actually rejoices. Okay. So then rejoice always, you know, something like that. So that's why this verb said that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay. So in other words, God knows you are using faith. Okay. The, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So then God, you, you use the power of God, the wisdom of God, then God loves you. Okay. So that's why this is Nehemiah, this one said, joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay. So next one, next one, the trial, trial and, uh, and zeal. That's what we, we want to just do, okay? This is, a, this is a very fantastic word of God. Trial, second Corinthians. Now, you, you know, we just read this first one. Second Corinthians. Chapter 8, verse 2. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep uh, poverty, uh, poverty abundant unto the riches of their uh, uh, liberality. Okay, so that, that, that's what this one said, then uh, we got the trial, but the Paul himself then to, under the trial, then a very hard time, so then uh, Second Corinthians chapter 8, 2 is a very good scripture to do. Okay, now, Colossians chapter 4, 13, zeal. Okay, zeal. You, you got the zeal, you know. God give us a zeal for us. So that's why we're going to just read Colossians chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 13. For I bear him record that he that a great zeal for you and them that are uh, in uh, Laodias and them in Hippodias. Okay. So actually, we really uh, zeal from the God. Zeal means is another special power from, from the God. So that's what we need as a Christian or a believer. So that's why applied to his believers, okay? Now next one, 
boldness. Bold, boldness, boldness, uh, uh, this one's a cha uh, ox, book of ox, okay, book of ox, chapter 4, verse 13, book of ox, chapter 4, verse 14, uh, verse uh, 13, okay. Book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. It is a very, very good. Why boldly? Boldly he talked. He got the boldness. Okay. You know, not, not just a small minded. No, then, uh, you know, I, I got a very small minded, but uh, with Jesus. I got the boldly talk, then also boldly uh, things we have to do something. So that's why this one said, then the, very clearly, this one said, then the, you know, once received Christ with Jesus, this one, you know, boldly you can talk. So that's why very important this, you know, what word, relate with the uh, church growth. Okay, growth. Each person got the boldly talk, even the natural and born and not, you know, boldly talk, but to still Holy Spirit to show you, give you directions, then you become a boldly talk. That's what this one said. Peter and John is an uneducated person. He never learn in a school and you know like a theology or uh, you know other stuff uh, maybe philosophy or uh, other subject okay he never learned but he can do boldly boldly he can say because he got the confidence with jesus christ because other people look at the oh wow john and peter's so boldly he he actually do something wow 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 now i know they used to be with jesus now i know that i know peter and john with jesus before okay how many years three years or something that's why he got the boldly so that's a part of the uh, God, God, uh, uh, you know, God, God Himself you know, teaching us boldness. Okay, this one. So then the second one, um, number seven, promises. Okay, promise. Second Peter chapter one verse four. Okay, this is a promise. Okay, book of uh, Peter. Okay, we're going to find out uh, Peter, book of Peter, chapter, uh, chapter 1, second Peter, chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are uh, given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by those he might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through wrath. This world is crazy. 
But to thank God, Jesus Christ give us, give us a hope, you know. So hope and also promise to that world, you know, world we live very crazy, you know, situation. But God himself will give us, especially Jesus Christ will give us encouragement and hope then we, we uh, can trust, okay? We can trust Him, okay? So that's why this is a, a great promise. You know, promise mean is a more like a covenant, contract. So I have a contract, contract with uh, God. I have a covenant with God. Also, you got the covenant with, with God. So then that's a promise. It's a very strong word, but, uh, you know, good for the uh, hope. Okay? So better than hope, you know. Sometimes in the world, this, this world said, I hope so, I hope so, mean is an almost nothing hope, you know. Just to, just to say that, you know, that one. But to here in the Bible say the promise, hope are different. Okay, so so that's a very very uh, important uh, you know difference between the world and uh, whenever Jesus or God say that. Okay, now next one applied to final thing. So this was maybe next week we, we do. Okay, now. Uh, we keep on going now, chapter 1, page 5. That, so this one we are going to. Okay, chapter 1, the power, strength of faith. Okay, faith to be made whole. You know, you know that, right? So this one's uh, we done uh, from the uh, book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25 to 29. Okay. This was a, like a 12 years woman's you know, issue of the blood. She can go out. She can meet other people. Just like now, you know, uh, coronavirus pandemic, you know, you can go out. Friend of mine, uh, his old family stay home, you know, can't go anywhere. Then they don't want to get the infection, infection of the coronavirus. Okay, so that's why just once in a while the wife go to the shopping and just quick and back. They don't, uh, she doesn't see anybody, you know. She doesn't want to see anybody. Just like a prison, you know situation but uh, anyway like a lady 12 years issue of blood she got the uh, uh, blood running then the smell may be bad and everything bad then then also uh, she spent lots of money all her money then but that Bible said that then all her money then spent but the still become worse. Mean is that that's much you spend money then the doctor or a hospital or something like that. Then the whole, uh, you know, like a, we are expecting then better than before. You know, nowadays then the, you know, some friend of mine got the, uh, cancer. It's not so easy to cure the cancer, you know. So then spend uh, lots of money Lots of insurance, then they sell the house, you know, whole thing, but uh, never cure, then the people die, you know, something like that. You know, so this lady, uh, issue of the blood, then chapter, Mark, book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. So this lady spent a lot of money. Lots of time, 
and then the stay home. But now, you know, she she has very hard time to maybe uh, pay rent or something like that. So then still, you know, she become weak and everything. But once she heard Jesus is coming this time, you know, that news she got, you know, how she got news, I don't know, Bible doesn't tell. But Bible tells she heard Jesus coming, Messiah, healer, come. Then the, her, her last hope to see him and ask him, then ask God can do. God is here. You know, Old Testament, you know, Jehovah Rapha, Rapha means is a God heal. That's his name, God's name. So that's why people know, you know, at the time, people know God heal me, you know, Old Testament time. You know, God, uh, God is a God, if realize God, what kind of function God, Jehovah kind of shepherd, you know, or uh, Jehovah Shalom, you know, peace, plus prosperity, or, uh, you know, provider, you know, all oh, God name on it. So that's why we just focus to the Jehovah Rapha mean the healer. Then the Jehovah Rapha healer is coming this time. She heard. So, so then she she actually uh, she sacrificed everything, you know, she her life. Then now I'm gonna see. Jesus, you know, that's why. So then Jesus passed by the place, then 12 the issues of that lady, if I, her confession, if I touch garment or prayer cross, okay, I'll be healed. That's her faith. If I touch garment, that's all. I'll heal. That's her faith. Okay. Actually, she understand he got the power. He got the healing power. He got the love. Love covered everything. You know, every uh, fear. Okay. So that's why once I touch him, I be healed. I'm okay. Everything okay. So that's kind of faith. So then end up the whole thing. She touch, okay, touch the garment. Then the, after that, power through through her arm and then the body, then the dry out the blood. Okay, blood running. So they suddenly stop blood running, dry out. Then she got the heal. She felt bad. So then the Jesus said, Your faith, your faith. Jesus told the lady, Your faith made Jesus, Jesus says, Your faith. To be made whole. Your faith to be made whole. So in other words, that the whole mean is a very important word. Okay. So that's why I think uh, church grows, you know, we are talking about, you know, we just uh, teach people. Okay, for to people, then what's actually C 
through the faith you may be whole. So in other words, the whole being is everything. This one's a she, you know, book, book of Mark described, the chapter five described. She got the broke. She got the nothing. She spent all her money. You know, she has no credit line, okay? So no credit line, then she can't borrow the money anymore. Spend all, you know, everything. Then I don't know, she got a relative, or mother, fa mother father, or brother, or some relative. Bible doesn't say that, but uh, I believe she got the none. No, you know, like uncle give her money and uh, you know, borrowed money or uh, something like that. Nothing Bible tells, but uh, she lost everything. That's what Bible Bible said. Then she used the faith to be whole. Mean is everything. Healing come back, and also another one's uh, finance. You know, things come back go to all and the health come back relationship other people's come back no more she doesn't she she doesn't need a height she said i'm healed by jesus stripes jesus healed me you know then she just testified whatever i touch because i believe i am healed so then I got here. See, that kind of faith we really need. So that's why this chapter, the power strength of faith, the real power, this one. So uh, her probably confession said, this is the be best day at the time, okay? Then, because Jesus loves me. And also Jesus in me. Jesus heal me. This is the day, the best day in my life. So I can see the picture. She got the heal. She doesn't need to hide anymore. Then she testified. So that's why she might say at the time to the everybody and also talk herself, this is a day. This is the best day. This is a day. This is the best day in my life because Jesus lives in me. Jesus with me. Jesus heal me. Jesus help me. Jesus understand me. Okay. So that's actually confession this point said. Okay, though, so the chapter one, God used his word in his face to create the universe. There are various kind of the strengths that the person needs to succeed. Faith is a spiritual force. Another word, that's a lady. Twelve years issue of the blood, lady. Use faith. Use faith because she knows spiritual force rise up her life. Okay. So that's why faith is a spiritual force power of the almighty you know attach you and me so one god used his word and his face to create the universe god also used faith let be the light 
and also God said, uh, God create, Father God create heavens and earth. That's the beginning. In the beginning, God create heavens and earth. You know, this one. Meaning that first he, gen uh, he actually created a be beautiful world like this. Okay. So then, uh, you know, uh, Genesis, Adam and Eve mess up, you know, certain things. They don't listen. They don't hear. That's the nature of the, our human being, but anyway. So then the Jesus came down and save us and give us more hope, give us for the, our future. God created all living things and provided uh, nourishment for all of them. The biblical uh, dietary laws, okay, laws are actually for your good health. Your spirit man needs to be fed whole sun food. Man live by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. That's a spiritual food. You know, like a Satan or evil spirit then, you know, suggest Jesus. Jesus was so hungry because 40 days, 40 nights, no food, fasting. Then he, he, his desire to eat something. So then the, uh, Satan attacked, attacked him. Okay, if you are hungry, if you need food, why don't you, you got the power of the miracle, working power. You know, just, a, you know, like a stone, little stone gravel, you know, like a change of bread, something like that. Why don't you do that? Then Jesus himself said, man shall not live alone uh, bread, bread. Man shall leave the word of God proceeding from the uh, mouth of God. Okay, that's what his answer. So that actually answer mean is a whole, his uh, life. And also, he recommend us, our life should be, you know, stand on the word of God. He said, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, said, you know, then Satan tried to attack this one, then, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that the proceed out of the mouth of the God, you know. This is a Jesus, his answer, you know, our life. No matter what the situation, you know, we just walk by faith, not by sight, you know. So in other words, walk by word of God, not by sight, okay. Okay, that's good, right? We walk by Word of God, not by sight. Okay, so that's actually answer this one. Religious food wants to strengthen you. You can be religious, but still not born again. Okay, you have to take spiritual food and eat it. Feeding on God's word produce strength. Don't mistake the anointing for uh, strength. The anointing is power. Like I said, anointing is power. Okay? Okay. You cannot grow uh, spiritual strength by 
feeding on spiritual candy. Okay, this is great, great illustration. Okay, you can't grow in spiritual strength by feeding on spiritual candy. What actually mean? Spiritual candy is just going to church, singing, and having a great time. You know, just go once a, once once you know once a week or just once in a while go to church and listen the word of God and worship. You know, so that's a, this one actually describes it more uh, spiritual candy. You need to receive the sincere milk of the word to cause you to grow. Not only just uh, uh, taking a milk, but to, anyway, receive the sincere milk of the word to cause you to grow. So sincere mean is a right word of God. Word of God is milk. But that's a milk. Stay milk all the time, never growing up some point you eat hard food okay then you know stomach start working digestion and the intense you know suck the nutrition you know all body and the functions then the correctly work okay so number two there are various kind of strengths that the persons need to succeed. Okay, first one. There is a strength of the soul, the mind, the will, the emotion, and the intellect. You must renew your mind to the word and the will of God. So this one's also important, but the kind of uh, Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. You know, you know five, uh, first one, the, there is the strength of the soul, soul, mind, the will, the emotion, and the intellect. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. So, man is a uh, spirit, soul, and body. I always say, I am spirit. I have a soul, intellectual one. I live in body. So that's our actually being, okay. Spend some personal time with the Lord Jesus. As you study the world, you feed your spirit and renew your mind. When you hear a thought in your mind, you can take that uh, thought, good or bad, by saying it. So Matthew 6, 31. And also 33 says, Seek ye kingdom of God, righteousness first. All things, other all things give unto you. So that's why first to seek word of God or Jesus Christ, okay, you know, first. Then the all other things that give and given to you. Worrying about the money is not the strength. Financial strength and the confidence in God come by meditating in that word day and night. Joshua, book of Joshua, chapter 1. Verse 8. When your strength is low, it need rest. Use your faith for God to supply your need and rest in the rest in the Lord. Number three, the power strength of faith. As you use your faith, keep it strong and Recharging, recharged by feeding it. Reading the word of God for intellectual food uh, doesn't pr 
proceed, uh, produce faith, it produce willpower. Okay, that's good. So in other words, so then if you feed just once, like eat once, no, three times a day you eat, right? Like a food, natural food. Same thing like the Word of God, you have to choose, recharge, just like a battery. If battery never recharge, you know, like a, for instance, turn on the headlight, engine stop, no alter, uh, alternator working, then one hour after, then the battery is gone. You can't drive, you can't start the engine, you know. Because you need to recharge battery all the time. As you go, uh, you know, some, somewhere, then the, you know, alternator, you know, turning, even the daytime, no lights, nothing, then the, then the charge battery. So then, uh, <clears throat> whenever that place, then turn on the head, headlight and keep going, okay. <clears throat> Okay, so that's why, just like a battery, recharge. Okay. Okay, now page seven. The power of the will is amazing. Power of will is amazing. Uh, disciple who had willpower was Thomas. Thomas said, you know, you know, he's, he got a very strong will, but not the faith. Okay, that's a good example of this one. He said, I will not believe. I will not believe. It was an act of his will. Very strongly, I will not believe. He chose to not believe Jesus was alive unless he put his finger in the nail print in the Jesus' hand and say, uh, sign. When a man has no faith, he is bound by his will. That man chose by his word to reject the directions of the law. Very, so th that's why very strong will he got. Jesus said to Thomas, because you, you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. Next one. Ask yourself, do I need strength in my life? What kind of the strength, physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually, determined to build your spirit, uh, spiritual strength by spending time with the Lord and in His Word? Meditate on what He said day and night, soon your strength will increase in very every area in your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I depend on you for strength in my life. I choose to read and study your word for wisdom and peace. I expect my spirit to grow strong as I seek you every day. Thank you. So my faith is increasing as I hear your word, according to Romans 10, 17. Uh, and my spirit is growing uh, stronger and stronger in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Is faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Okay, folks, so this is it. So next week, we start chapter 2. Okay, chapter 2, this is renewing your spirit, 
spiritual strength. Okay. Then also we just go back uh, uh, earlier. I told you, uh, you know, go go back and uh, apply the to final thing. Okay, chapter chapter uh, page four. Reason why church growth mean is we got to know scripture and also listen to the voice of the Lord. Then what actually the Lord wants to. And also we need uh, direction and guidance uh, very deeply in order to church grow. Okay? Thank you. See you.